What's up, y'all? I'm Sheila J, and welcome to the Diva Dish. This episode is all about Power Book Three: Raising Canaan. We're to Episode Two: Reaping and Sewing. This episode is directed by Mr. Mario Van Peebles. Really good episode. Pretty much picks up where it left off. I'm joined again by my wonderful son here, Christopher Gage Clark, and we're about to get into this episode. All right, so Canaan gets up. Um, his mama's calling him in the kitchen child for breakfast because it's time to go to school. So, you know, she's kind of looking at him, eyeing him, checking him out like, you know, you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm ready to go back to school. So she was like, all right, don't talk to nobody about this. And so he walks outside and these kids are coming up in his car looking real dry by ish They were just tossing papers out. No, phone books, child. So she was like, I'm going to take you to school. Okay. So they get in the car. She made him put a seatbelt on. It was kind of cute. And basically they're in the car, you you know, chit chat, and he was like, "Why well, I gotta go to school in the first place? You know, I'm out here. You said you're gonna show me the game. You know, what's up?" So she's like, "You know, I need you to stay in school. You know, we gotta keep shit looking normal." So he gets to school, child, and there is this big brew, ha ha, little Davina, child, uh, deadly Davina, I think is what what you call it, called her. No, to my famous. Yeah, what yeah, do you call her? He called her. Um, I think that's what he called her. <laughs> but this is what I want y'all to notice. That shirt Kanan got on. I'm about to show you in the picture over here. That shirt, one of my favorite '90s references. The Freddy Krueger colors. Hmm? Don't don't look at me like that. I'm serious. The red and the green. Colors. We all know Kanan ended up being a monster. He killed his own son. He killed the old lady. Beat the shit out of her first. And then he killed the old lady in that apartment. Mm -hmm. Savage monster. Oh, but I just love the use of color, the references. I don't know if they meant to do it. I'm pretty sure they probably did because this show is brilliant. But yeah, I loved it. Moving on. So, um, yeah, so then we cut to Rock and her brothers. They're having breakfast. They talking about what they gonna do now that they gave up their corners to Neek. Mm -hmm. And they discussing their next move. Right? And then Rock goes, in, you gotta look at the camera most of the time. No, you don't, not really. So Rock goes into this, you know, um, was it Lulu? Lulu's a smart one, right? Uh, yeah, the younger one. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's being established even more that Lulu and Rock are like, the brains and Marvin is more the muscle. She's like, another 90s reference that I loved. She's like, I'm gonna need you to do that, Reggie Jackson. Moving on. So, but then uh, Marlon's like, what y'all talking about Reggie Jackson? Because Marlon's like, look, I'm finna throw a party down at the club where the white chick, the white chick was at. And they're like, why you gonna have a, how you gonna have a party? You know, we trying to lay low, keep it, you know, he was like, this is gonna be a few people, don't worry about it, it ain't gonna be no problem. Okay. <clears throat> you already know it's gonna be a house party type situation, Jeff. So, next scene, we're back at the school. Kanan is in the office talking to Davina, who just got to fighting with the child. I mean, bust that girl mouth wide open. Savage, Davina. And basically, she was like, I was with Buck the night before he was shot. And so, okay, so we cut to the office, and Kanan's like, um, oh, hey, Davina, you know you love her. So, like, hey, Davina, and she's like, hello. And uh, he's like, so, uh, she was like, yeah, you know, I wasn't even fighting her about her being with Buck. It was more so about she was, like, talking shit about him, and he was, you know, he just died or whatever. Right. Yeah, she seemed like she really didn't trust him. Kanan. Up. No, Kanan. Kanan. Yeah. She was like looking away from him. She kind of was. But I think she was more like Shane. Oh my God. Then her mom comes. <laughs> mom. <laughs> Stay in the car. Acting a fool. <laughs> Look at a <her> mess. <laughs> I mean, I have, I have things to do. <laughs> Comb your hair, number one. <laughs> Can we start there, Mom? It was a very lean on me type of situation. Okay. They go into the office, you know, the mama going on talking about child. She got she got shit to do. She has a life. So um, Davina was like, you know, you won't see me for a while, or whatever. She's gotta take care of her little sister. Anyway, so then we cut to the cemetery. So she's there with Unique, and um, what are they talking about? Rock and Unique. Um... Oh yeah, she's like, did you call your people off? 
So then we cut to, oh my God, the lunchroom. He's in the Freddy Krueger shirt. <laughs> and it's 50 narrating. He's like, basically, you know, once you kill somebody, child, niggas can smell it on your ass. Like, everybody looking at them like. So D Wiz, <laughs> D Wiz. You know, it's the crew. D Wiz, famous jukebox and Canaan. You know, we see Davina get, Davina, don't get no Mina. <laughs> Davina, don't get no Mina, child. She was not playing with that girl. So the next thing we cut to uh, Malcolm Davis, Omar Epps, the detective. He's chit-chatting with his little rookie partner chick, right? Tough girl. She's like, you know, she's like, got her rules. Like, all right, so rule number one, when we have a homicide, we're supposed to go talk to the mother and go talk to the family. And he's like, we're not going to do all that. Well, what about Taquani and Jackson <laughs> come out? What was his name? Buck 20. Buck 20. Yeah. Don't nobody call him that. <laughs> okay, girl. And so they, he was like, we're going to go see the tailor. So then we cut to Marvin gets to the club. Light and bright. Raquel, a little junk there. The bartender that we think is a cop. But he cute. Real Christopher Williams type. Shamar Moore looking. So appropriate. God, these references are so good. Anyway. So, um, yes, but he's a tough guy. You know, Marlon, like, uh, ain't you the one that's going out with my sister? He was like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, Raquel, that's my little sister. And he was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, his name is Symphony. It's so dramatic. You know, he's scoping it out because he wanted to have his parte. Okay, so he's looking for the white chick. So, um, he goes upstairs. She doing the lines on the table, child. But he's like, I'm good. <laughs> Which I thought was cute. Um, so he's like, look, I want to have a few, a few friends, operative words, a few, over for a party. And she was like, all right, you got to pay the DJ and, um, my clientele still has to come. So he's like, all right, whatever. So then Malcolm and the white girl, his partner get to the tailor and she's like, you're not going to have me sitting in the car. You know, I'm sick of your shit. And he was like, that's good. Great. But you still don't wait in the car. <laughs> so he gets out of the car. Pimp walks. I'm getting very Denzel Washington training day vibes from him now, don't you yeah, think? Yeah. Big time. Like, I'm the HNIC, King Kong, I got the no me type energy job. So he goes in. Unique is getting this custom jacket made. And you can tell they're very familiar. He calls him Neek. All he says was, you know, can they talk in private? They go and talk. And you can really tell that. You know, Malcolm's a dirty cop. Mm -hmm. and or, 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 or. I feel like he was, well, I guess he could be dirty and still want to save the kid's child. You look like a dirty it cop. It could just be, yeah, he, he looks a little grimy, for sure. But he could be, like, an evil for an evil. You know what I mean? Like, don't kill no more kids. And, you know, I'll help you out. Because it's going to go on either way. Yeah, it looks like they got some type of deal. Right. They both, because they both don't want, you know, exactly. Raquel running everything. Right. And another little point there, when Unique was talking to Malcolm, he was like, you need to tell your girl, your girl, <laughs> what, sir? Who's, who's your girl? Raquel, your girl? Mm. Interesting. Just saying. Oh, my God. Then this next scene, the kids are walking. I, I thought this was so strange. So, um, Marvin picks up okay. Kanan. And now, mind you, Chewbox is his child. And he's like, you want to ride? <laughs> Daddy. And she's like, no, I'm good. And he's like, I know you're good, but do you want to ride? I just thought it was weird. Like, is he slow? Yeah. It just seemed weird. He wasn't acting like no daddy. At all. That's what made it so bizarre. But anyway, so Kanan gets in and everybody but like, I feel like, I feel like she knew where they was going so that's why she didn't say she wanted to go because he always saying you know when stuff go down where was she at right so she might be knowing about all this stuff yeah so okay so lulu and rock are at a store because they're looking for a new front because they're like our trap houses are hot i'm pretty sure they're gonna get busted at some point so lulu had told her earlier about this lady that he knew she was middle eastern and um had kind of said that mentioned to him or alluded to the gang. Yes. Yeah, like she 
She knew he was a hustler. So Marvin drops off Kanan at the trap house. And so they walk in, the dude's playing video games. And he's like, Kanan was like, what am I gonna do here? And uh, Marvin was like, you're the dragon. You're the dragon guarding the cold. <laughs> so then we cut back to the store. And the guy, the guy's trying to play it up. He's like, listen, I want some of the proceeds from the drug sales. If y'all gonna be using my store for a front. And they were like, you got us fucked up. Okay, no. It's not a ghost. Unless you're gonna get out on that corner with us. You don't get any of that money. You'll get what we agree on. And that's that on that. Moving on. The next scene we have Jukebox and a friend of hers out on the New York streets trying to sell some clothing merchandise. And her friend, Jukebox's friend, ain't having no luck. His negotiation skills is not a he ain't got none. But Jukebox, she out there scamming Hustling. everyone. Everyone come her way. Got three hundred fifty dollars off that polo coat. Yes. Yeah. It was nice too. Very nice. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was a, a Van People suit that she sold. So he looked just like one of them child. He said that's too much. She yeah. Said, he was like, whoa. She said, keep a step in it. Right. So the next scene. Um, so she sells a jacket for three fifty, and then we cut to Kanan's at home with his mom, baby. Um. She getting ready to go Raquel's out. Raquel's gonna go out, child. And, and you see how these red walls, when they get back to her room, she got to look at her cold shoulder. Then you got Love another it. reference to Kate, Kane's daddy, Defcon, and about how... It's so scary. <laughs> and about how... Um, Not Defcon. When she was first in the game, Defcon had her do the same thing, sit at the trap house, born all day, watch TV. But she was pregnant. Yeah, because she was pregnant for one. And... He, she was just saying how it's a test to see if he'll follow orders right. and do what she says. Yeah. Because that's what he's supposed to do. And she says, you know, he can have a friend over, stuff like that. Girl, another 90s reference. I got um, New Jack City on bootlegs, so uh, why don't you invite D-Wiz over? Don't go, D-Wiz, don't go. Next thing, we got Kanye looking all over the trap house just for some. You know, bored. Probably, yeah, just bored. Mm -hmm. Want something to do, and he stumbled upon this, you know, chained up door, all locked up, everything. Then um, the guy that was in there, I forget his name. He came in there like, "What you doing?" And I mean, this thing was like it was like a for real life video game. Like it was so animated with all the locks. It's like really, did they check all that? But I wonder what's behind that door, trucks. Probably that money. Yeah. So basically, the dude clowns him too. He was like, "Look, you are here. You're not guarding no goddamn dragon. You are not a dragon. You ain't guarding no damn castle, no gold. I am babysitting you, sir. And you so stupid. You don't even know I'm talking bad to the little boy child." So the next scene, we have jukebox and she with that little white girl again, and lady love. <laughs> They shopping, looking for something to wear, cause that girl really want jukebox to come to her little thing. Right, she said, "You want, oh, you want me to come to your white people dance?" She said, yeah. "It's not a white people dance, it's a white people ball." Get it right. And you know, jukebox gets a little mad because the girl asked if she needs to buy a shirt for her, and she was like, "What you think? I ain't got no money." Right. And she storms out all mad, and the girl comes back, and it they was have, the sweetest scene. I thought they have a little moment. They did. It was they, so sweet. Yeah. Yeah, they had a kiss, but it was done so well. Like, it seemed like you couldn't even tell that it was like, it didn't even matter. Just like young love. It was just cute. Moving on. Scene Good after job. that, we got D Wiz at the bus stop, and all of a sudden, you know, suspenseful. It's, you know, I mean, just me. What's about to happen? Then a car rolls up on him, and it's, it's Lulu. Lulu. And Lulu, um,. You know, tells he tells him, you know, I got Kanan at this party with me. Come on, let's go. You know, Kanan's up there. And Lulu know. was like, no, he just asked. He's like, look, where are you going? What you doing? He's like, I'm going to go Kanan's house. house. He was like, Watch New Jack City. Yeah, he was like, Kanan's at this party with me. Then in the next scene, we're at the party. And uh, what's her name? The um, uh, Tony. Yeah, Tony, yeah. the lady, the host. The white lady with the dog. Mm-hmm. She was outside. Host with the most child. <laughs> she was talking to Marvin like, hey, this is a little bit more than right. a few friends. Right. Yeah, he had the line wrapped around the building, child. And um, 
He walks back just to see who's there, and you know, it's a four guys. They're talking about something you need. I heard you need some firepower, some men. And, you know, they're getting a little, <laughs> little argument or something about, you know, just stupid stuff. Right. Then, next scene, we have Lulu and D Wiz. They in the club, and Lulu talking to this girl. And he gives her some money, you know. She take D Wiz to the bathroom, give him. And do grown up stuff. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But this is what's so gangsta about this part of the episode. It's because it's the climax of the episode, and they scored it to... It's like, it's so suspenseful, you don't know what's gonna happen. That, and the song that they play is Jukebox singing If Only You Knew by Whitney Houston, which was a big record then, huge. Whitney Houston was everything. You know. And, uh, it was perfect. It was... Oh. Then uh, we got a scene, Marvin is outside, and this guy's trying to get in the club, grabbing on Tony, and, you know, Marvin come up, boom, hit him. Brutus. And then everybody, you know, just starts fighting. And then those four guys that said they helped Marvin, they jump in. Then all of the cops show up. Everybody. And Tony Child just dysfunction at its finest child. Real Holly type vibes. Holly. <laughs> Who's like, oh my God, nobody's ever fought for me before. <laughs> Bye, Holly. Tony. Two yeah. syllables. You Peace. know, like my mama said, very <laughs> ominous jukebox singing. Kane, I'm not Kane, excuse me. Uh, Lulu and D Wiz were, looks like they were under a bridge or something. And looks like, you know, they were both peeing, but Lulu checks his watch and. <laughs> Lights out. He D pulls Wiz. out his gun. Shot D Wiz. But he really didn't look like he wanted to do it at no, all. No, he didn't want to do it. No, he was definitely His face was conflicted. scarred. He had a tear in his eye, Chad. Yeah, he was, he was trying to cry. Yeah. He didn't want to do that. Uh. Right before he shot him, he looked like he was just about to break down and cry. Ooh. But that that's it for that episode. Savage. But yeah, we skipped the scene, child, but it's just um, Raquel and Shamar, child. They have a little moment, child. You know, he's like, I wanted to take it slow. She's like, child, lay down. <laughs> <laughs> what she say? Fuck that noise. <laughs> I think that's what she said. It is screaming. Oh, okay. But yeah, so that was actually pretty much it. It was, and then we skipped another scene where Kanan came outside. Saw Davina. Davina came up with her little sister child. For some reason, I feel like that's gonna be her child somehow. Anyway, but the child she looked real crackish too. Her lips were so chapped. It was like Davina, girl. Mm -hmm. Some lip gloss on, child. But um, yeah, she was like, Kanan, go and tell me the truth. <laughs> She said, um, I heard you were your friends and Buck had some beef and you know Kanan, you know, he becoming a liar that fast. Don't believe it. Or yeah, soul really. dying the darkness. <sighs> Please <laughs> let it stop. Stop. <laughs> Whatever. He's evil. It's me. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, can't wait for the next episode. Really? It's been so good. Just like power, of course. Like, there were no throwaway episodes. Mm -hmm. Like, every minute is meaningful. Oh my God, it's so good. All right, so thank you for watching. You've been here before. Thank you so much for coming back. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button. Smash that notification bell so you can be notified when we drop new videos. Um, yeah, that's all I got. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. See you later.